I'm an art director. I help brands and organizations communicate complex, multifaceted messages by designing websites, motion graphics, print materials, and the campaigns that knit it all together. I use the visual medium to do so because our species evolve brains that process images 60,000 times faster than written language. You see, before design, my first passion was for science. Neuroscience, in fact. I got into neuroscience through dance. I was a ballerina for many years until I had a terrible skiing accident that tore everything out of my knee. After my surgery, I couldn't believe just how much my sense of balance and coordination had changed. I was devastated. So I studied neuroscience at Columbia to understand why I couldn't move as gracefully as I used to, to understand how neurons give rise to movement. I continued on at Dr. Jakob Stern's lab, studying how brains change in old age. With life expectancies on the rise, the elderly make up more and more of the population. As individuals and as a society, we need to understand how to age gracefully with our mental faculties intact. Despite this very important mission, our lab had a problem. We couldn't convince people to participate in our work. While older people saw the value in being our guinea pigs, it was difficult to reach the healthy, active, younger professionals. Even though we'd pay them for their time, they saw the six to seven hours of testing like tedious volunteer work, at best. To be fair, our recruitment materials really needed help. We would literally mail people letters crammed full of text without a single image and called it our marketing outreach. <laughs> I tried to take a stab at giving these materials a makeover myself, but I didn't know what I was doing and it didn't help. But it turned out that we weren't alone. Nearly every research group at the medical center suffered from this same inability to convey the vital urgency of their work. I became obsessed with this issue, started taking design classes at night, and eventually got my MFA at Pratt. I realized there was a vast body of knowledge about how ideas are communicated, how feelings are evoked, and how campaigns are run. Even as I immersed in the world of design, I never forgot my original goal to help the world better understand why scientific research matters. Stepping outside of the academic setting, I saw how research is hyped and distorted in the media. How anti-vaxxers and climate change deniers misrepresent how science works, and how billion dollar declines in research funding are forcing labs to shut down promising areas of inquiry. Between 2003 and 2015, the NIH's budget dropped 22%, resulting in an exodus of brilliant scientists leaving research and setting medical progress back for a generation. No wonder 50% of AAAS scientists said in a 2014 poll that now is a bad time for science. So, a couple months ago, I decided to embark on a project, calling on some of the brilliant neuroscientists and designers I knew. The Leading Strand is an initiative that uses design to shine a light on breakthroughs happening in science. We pair scientists and designers to co-create experiences that translate research in rigorous and visually compelling ways. One of our pairs is DJ Bamamuku. He's a postdoc in Catherine Dulock's lab at Harvard, and Vicky Du, an award-winning filmmaker. DJ is looking at how the brain determines sexual identity and gender. He studies how the brain influences behaviors such as parenting, mating, and aggression in mice. His work focuses on the vomer nasal gland. This gland senses pheromones. So disabling this gland, he's found, results in a breakdown of sex-specific behaviors. So females start mounting other females and even males. This research tells us that in mice, there isn't a separate brain for males and females. They share the same underlying neural circuitry and depend on their sense of smell to direct sexual behavior. So let's watch a teaser for the film they've created. Volition. How do I decide to generate the movement to pick up this cup and put it to my lips and sip? How does that happen from the brain?
Some other projects include a continuously learning song that listens to, remembers, and interprets the sounds of its environment. This will act as a musical metaphor for how memory may work in the human brain. Another is a chatbot that helps you understand how your physical activity can improve your mood and memory. As the first cohort of collaborations from the Leading Strand near completion, I can't help but think that we're building a museum for the smartphone era. Immersive, intelligent, and interactive. Projects like these are important because understanding science is important. Much of our society's progress has been built on a foundation of scientific discovery. We need to encourage the public and private sector to fund crucial basic research to drive tomorrow's breakthroughs. Let's inspire a generation of kids to go into STEM fields so that they can take on tomorrow's new challenges and opportunities. But it starts with understanding. And design can lead the way by helping the world appreciate the stories, people, and ideas behind the important but often inaccessible institution that is science. Thank you.